have been thinking a lot lately about nature and nurture as it relates to how my children became what I call theater children. Theater children are like other children, only with minimal fresh air and exercise. <laughs> they don't have a great deal of experience with sports, or balls of any kind, <laughs> but they do know all of the lyrics to musical comedies produced in the last 50 years. My husband and I met in the theater department at college. After pursuing our acting dreams in New York City, we settled into careers that were somewhat of a compromise, yet still theater-related. I manage two off-Broadway theaters in New York City, and Hubby is a drama and TV teacher at our local high school. We didn't set out to create theater children, but now I realize theater children were inevitable. With our first child, we mastered what we affectionately dubbed the baby handoff. I was working at a theater management job in New York City during the day, my husband was working as a stage manager at night. We lived in New Jersey, so you do the math. My husband would pick, pack our babe into her car seat, drive through the Lincoln Tunnel, pull up in front of the theater where I worked, get out of the car, kiss me as I took his place in the driver's seat. He headed off to his theater and I headed home from mine, baby and I driving back once more through the Lincoln Tunnel. From the time of her birth, our daughter was commuting to and from the theater. <laughs> She knew no other way of life. The good news is though Hubby and I were like ships that passed in the night, <laughs> we never had to put our daughters in daycare. One of us was always around. They had two professionally trained, always willing actors to perform all the parts and the stories they dreamed up. There was one weekend when I performed a takeoff on Little Red Riding Hood so many times that even I was astounded at what big eyes I had. <laughs> When we weren't working in the theater, we were going to the theater for fun. One year, after watching the Tony Awards, I found my seven-year-old daughter playing with two Barbie dolls tied together at the thigh, singing, I'm Daisy, I'm Violet, from Sideshow. She knew every word. We were a theater family. Children occasionally have birthday parties with themes. Theater children do too, they just have obscure themes. When she was 10 years old, my daughter insisted on an Into the Woods birthday party where the children could play pin the pretty face on the hideous witch. <laughs> Made sense to us. And perhaps we should have known the direction our daughter's lives were headed when one Halloween our daughter announced she would be Louisa from the Fantastics, of course. The other parents had no idea who she was. <laughs> they thought she looked cute. We thought Edmund Rostman would be proud. <laughs> Our kids had the benefit of having not just a theater mom, but also a theater dad. And not just any theater dad, but one who was also one of the directors at our local high school. Suffice to say that his role of dad slash director created its share of drama in our home. But I always felt that it was a good thing that my theater children learned some harsh realities about the business at the hands of their own father. You see, we work in the theater, so we weren't exactly two mama roses dying for our daughters to shine in the spotlight. We knew the odds, and we knew the pain and rejection it might hold for our sensitive theater children. We knew that with each big role our theater child won, the roots curled deeper, and the career in computer programming, or <laughs> nursing, slipped further away. It's not so much that we were rooting against our child on audition day, it's that we feared what the whole thing might mean. A BFA in acting. <laughs> <clears throat> Both of my gals, yes, but perhaps the larger fear was that our th theater children might live with us for the rest of their natural <laughs> lives. <clears throat> my truth is that There are no times in my life, no memories more precious than the times that I sat in a darkened theater watching my children perform. It is the height of joy for so many reasons, not least of which is that I know I have passed on my core beliefs to my children. Theater is my religion, and I believe in children and art. 
So did my children become theater children because they were conceived by two former actors who transferred the genetic equivalent of Stanislavic material straight into their hearts? Or was it because we followed their lead, because we allowed ourselves to join in their imaginary fantasy games? Was it because we took them to every piece of live theater in the tri-state area? Or was it a little bit of both? I think so. I have come to realize that the nurture part flows both ways. It's true what you hear. The business of theater is brutal. Rejections are frequent, and it is a rare anyone that spends the time to support and praise you. But here's the thing. Despite all my warnings of the difficulties of a life in the theater, my children lived it, they grew up in it, so they knew what they were getting into from the beginning. My theater children went ahead and pursued their dreams anyway. And I, a pragmatic mama rose, I support them. Even if it means they live with me forever. <laughs> because life is too short for anything less. And so what was just in their nature, and really who nurtured who? After all, my children taught me that following your dreams is sometimes bigger than heeding your mother's warnings. And here I am, at 56 years of age and until just now convinced that my performing days were far behind me, I had the gumption to audition for a show called Listen to Your Mother, because in fact, I listened to my children.